All right, so here's a very quick and dirty uh, podcast on two different methods for adding vectors. So we're just going to do a couple little problems. So Jerome, he walks four kilometers to the north, 4K to the north, and he walks 8K to the east. What is his displacement? So there's this thing called the parallelogram method. We take this vector and this vector and make a parallelogram out of it. So basically all we do is leave this guy here, but put another one the same length at the starting at the tip of this guy in the same length, same direction as this one. So it forms a nice little parallelogram. Do the same thing with this guy. Look, oh, we have a lovely little rectangle. And what do we do with this rectangle? We take this point where they both start and we draw it to the point where they both end, because this guy is also four. Just remember, you can move vectors as long as you don't change their direction, as long as you keep their length the same, and as long as you keep the direction the same, you can move vectors however you want. So parallelogram, we took these two original vectors, these black guys, and we drew another one the same length over here, another one the same length over here, made a parallelogram, in this case a lovely little rectangle. And now we can find the resultant pretty easy using the Pythagorean theorem. So r is going to be 8 squared plus 4 squared. Whatever that turns out to be, we're not going to do the math. All right, tip to tail method. We've already talked about this guy. Same thing, except instead of drawing a parallelogram, we're just moving this whole vector that was over here. We're just moving him so his tail lines up with the tip of this guy. We could have also moved this guy instead. We can move the bottom one up here so its tail and its tip measured out. See, it's the same as the parallelogram method, except we're only moving one vector, and our resultant's going to look like that. So we can either just move the four kilometers north one over, or we can move that eight kilometers to the east one up. And we get another right triangle, easy to work with, same answer as last time, to find the resultant. All right, parallelogram method with this guy. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to move the tail of this guy. We're going to create a mirror image of this guy. We're just going to slide him down. As long as its direction is going the same and its length's the same, we're all good. So. So we did. Mirror image of this guy over here. Still in the same direction, still the same length. Mirror direction of this guy up here. Same direction, same length. And what do we do? We connect this point to this point, and that's what our resultant looks like. Easy as pie. That one's a little straighter than the one I drew. Or tip to tail method. We're just going to slide this guy down to here and connect the points. Or you can slide that guy up and also connect the points like that. So it doesn't matter which one you move, you're still going to get this same result. So if I would have moved this guy instead, it looks something like this. Disregard that guy. You get the same result in either way, no matter what you do. So slide one of them, same result. All right. And this is probably what you're going to be doing the most, the analytical vector addition. It's a lot easier than it sounds, trust me. So you have two vectors. One of them starts at the origin. The other one starts where the other one ends. So this angle in here is 75 degrees. According to that, this angle in here is 20 degrees. If you remember from a previous podcast, how we would say this would be this guy is three kilometers at 20 degrees north of east, because this is the east direction. This is the north direction. So 30 kilometers north of east. Or, sorry, three kilometers north of east. Sorry, I just had a seventh grader bust in. Apparently they can't read signs on the doors. And this guy would be 75, or sorry, two kilometers at 75 degrees north of east, because east, we're going north of the east direction, 75 degrees. So you can either write this as 2 kilometers at 
75 degrees north of east, or the way that I like to write them now. My wonderful students over the summer taught me two kilometers. You're traveling in the east direction, you go 75 degrees north. It means the same exact thing. Now we can also call this something different if we look at the north direction. Use a different color. Instead of 75 north of east, or 75 east, or sorry, two kilometers east, 75 north, if we look at it from the northern direction, this guy in here will be 15 degrees. 15 plus 75 is 9. So we can also write that as 2 kilometers at 15 degrees east of the north direction. Or my new favorite way of saying it, 2 kilometers north, 15 degrees east. Both of these mean the same exact thing, just written a little differently. So 2 kilometers, you're traveling north, and you go 15 degrees east of it. That's what this guy means. And this guy means it too. All right, so that was just a little refresher. Now we're actually going to use the analytical vector addition method. And to do that, you only focus on one vector at a time. One vector at a time. Don't try to do it all at once. This is wicked easy if you guys just do it one step at a time. So here's that first vector, 3 kilometers at 20 degrees. This is 20 degrees in here, 3 kilometers. Now, the good thing about vectors and choosing the origin and placing these guys wherever you want, we can always make right triangles. So this guy, even though it's 3 kilometers long at 20 degrees north of east, it has two components. So this guy is actually made up of two different vectors. So here's your first vector, it's all east. Here's your second vector that's all north. Sorry if that's not a very straight vector. So we call this the x components. And this one, the y components. Now every single vector that we work with has an x and a y component. Even if it's straight along this axis, it still has a y component. The y component is zero. So when you're doing the analytical method, you want to find the x component. So we take this vector, 3 kilometers at 20, and we break it in its x component and its y component. And how we do that is using SOHCAHTOA. So we're going to try to find the x component first. The x side is adjacent to the angle, so we're going to use cosine. So it's going to be 3 kilometers, because that's the hypotenuse, times the cosine of the angle. And similarly for the y component, 3 kilometers times the sine of the angle. Because it's the opposite. It's the opposite of the angle. That's why I teach you trig. So there's the x component. I'll get rid of my annotations here. So same thing I just said. H cosine of theta will give you your x. And if you put that in your handy-dandy calculator, make sure you put it in degrees because we don't like radians. You get 2.82 kilometers. And for doing the Y stuff, we're using sine. And you get 1.03 kilometers. So it has an X component of 2.82. Don't forget your units. I take off points on tests and quizzes for no units. All right. So now we found the first vectors, x component and y component. Now we need to find the second vectors, x component and y component. Its x looks something like that, its y looks something like that. Because remember, every vector at an angle can be made up of two vectors. It's the result of two vectors, one in the x direction, one in the y direction. So to find the x component for this guy, the x component, it's an adjacent angle. So it's hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. So 2k cosine 75 degrees. Make sure your calculator's in degrees, not radians. Your y, here's your x, here's your y. Your y is going to be 2 kilometers sine 75 degrees. And you're going to get some y value. 
So you put this in your calculator, you get 0.52 kilometers. Doing the Y component, put that in, you get 1.93 kilometers. All right, and now what do you think you do? All you do, you add the X's together, you add the Y's together, and you get your resultant vector. Because you think of the resultant vector that's going to look something like this. Starts at the origin, because we're doing uh, tip to tail. The tail of this guy, let me draw it to the tip of this guy. It's going to look like this. That's just going to be one big right triangle. It's going to have the X component from the first vector and the X component for the second vector added together. It's going to have the Y component from the first vector and the Y component from the second vector added together for its overall Y component. So we add the X component stuff together, you get 3.34. You add the Y component stuff together, you get 2.96. So that means this overall distance here is 3.34 kilometers and 2.96 kilometers up. So no matter how many vectors we had, if we had another vector coming off this guy, say it went down like this, this one also has a Y component, but you gotta be careful because its Y component is going to be negative this time and it's going to have an X component. And all we would do is add all three of these Y components together, all three of the X components together, and we get the components for the resultant vector. You could have another guy that goes like this, and another guy that goes like this, and another guy that goes like this, and another guy that goes like this. And all you have to do, it looks confusing, but all you have to do is find the components of each vector. Make a little chart like this, add all the X's, add all the Y's, and the res all the additions together will give you the, the components of the resultant vector. And that's what your resultant looks like. It's pretty. Now you can find the length of it using Pythagorean theorem. And you always have to give your angle in here too. Don't forget your angle. And don't just say this guy's going northeast because northeast is the wrong angle. I want the exact angle. So you find the result in using Pythagorean theorem. Now you can find the angle using the uh, your tangent function. So tangent opposite over adjacent. Your adjacent is 3.34. Your opposite is 2.96. So you can remember we're going to do the inverse tangent because we're finding an angle of opposite over adjacent. 2.96 divided by 3.34. And you get theta of 41.5 degrees. So this angle right here is 41.5 degrees. Alright, so how we would express that, if I asked you for your answer, the thing that you circled, you either gotta draw me one of these charts like this, or you have to express it as such 4.46 kilometers at, all right, it's 41.5 degrees. So at 41.5 degrees north of the east direction, north of east. Or you could say 4.46 kilometers. Eh, I want to erase that, that part. 4.46 kilometers traveling east and you go 41.5 degrees north of it. You can also say 4.46 kilometers north, and you do 41.5, or is that 90 minus 41.5? Just 48.5, 48.5 degrees east, or 4.46 kilometers at 48.5 degrees east of north. Okay, now these two guys mean the same thing, and these two guys mean the same thing. 
you got to give me one of these answers. And why can I use the 48.5 degrees? Because the top two we measured from the east direction, the angle from the east. We measured this angle. The bottom two we're measuring this angle, which is going to be 48.5 degrees. And it's measured with respect to the north axis. So either way is good. So any answer you give me on a test, you can give me from the north direction or from the east. You know, you're not always going to have them go northeast either. You can have them go down this way. But there's four answers for every problem. So hopefully you get one of them. And that's all.